Ani, Adele Usmore and Dijnikaz, Shifananing and Donjba. Hello, my name is Adele Lusmore and I'm a Treaty Indian from Shibonining, also known as Killarney, Ontario. In this video, I'm going to share with you a brief that I sent to the Standing Committee on Indigenous and Northern Affairs. They are meeting right now to discuss Bill C-53. That bill proposes to recognize the Métis Nation of Ontario and two other Métis nations out west as Indigenous governments. But MNO's false Métis history of Killarney and environs should raise serious questions about MNO's claim to represent descendants of historic communities in Ontario. So the image that you're looking at on the left is Margaret Froe. She's the president of the Métis Nation of Ontario. And this is a picture taken from one of the meetings with the Standing Committee on Indigenous and Northern Affairs. And what she said in that meeting is, you need to show distinct Métis ancestry and you need to show that Métis ancestry within historic Métis communities because Métis rights are collective rights. They're all about those historic communities. And she's right. So what I tried to show the committee in my brief is that the historic Métis community of Killarney and environs is bogus. This is the map I used to show that MNO's Métis community called Killarney and environs includes Manitoulin Island and stretches north almost to Montagamy. West to east, it's from somewhere <clears throat> west of Spanish River to somewhere east of the Wanapate River. It includes so-called Métis ancestors from Shiging, Kong, Mississauga, Sagamuk, Whitefish River, Atikamekshang, and Shabonining. MNO and Ontario's historic Métis communities are made up of groups of verified Métis family lines. And those family lines are made up of documented Métis. MNO defines a documented Métis as an ancestor who was in a historic Métis community by a certain date, uh, meaning the, a date before European governments had control over the area, and who in an old record was called a half-breed, or any word referring to mixed Indian European ancestry. If the relatives of a documented Métis stayed in the historic community for at least two generations, they become a verified Métis family line. I'm going to show you one of the ways in which these definitions are a problem. Okay, so here's the Tranche Montagna family from MNO's uh, documents on the verified Métis people. On the left is a chart that I made. I made both of these charts. The one on the left is based on the one in MNO's document on the Trosh Montagna family. The one on the right shows uh, that one little blue square rectangle down at the bottom is Joseph Trosh Montagna. And MNO says that in an 1899 report, an Indian Affairs official stated that Joseph Trosh Montagna Sr. was said to have been a half-breed. That's the exact wording, said to have been a half-breed. So this rumor that Joe was a half-breed was enough for the Métis Nation of Ontario to classify Joseph as a documented Métis. And, that, and they labeled his relatives a verified Métis family line. 
So Joseph is the only person in the whole family that they have documentation showing someone calling him a half-breed, and that turned all his relatives into Métis people. So when they say verified Métis family, they're not talking about Joseph's family, like his children and grandchildren. They're talking about all his relatives, all the relatives they can find, all together turned Métis because Joseph was called a half-breed. So what you're seeing on the screen on the left is one of the statements that MNO makes frequently about the two people pictured in, this photo, in, the, in those photographs. They claim that the fur trader at Jean Rockbert de la and his wife and their children are the first identified Métis family in Killarney in 1820. But here's the problem. Etienne was a white man and Sesagonique, his wife, was Odawa. And I mention in my brief three different um, publications that talk about them. In 1905, um, a, a well-known historian in Quebec called Pierre Georges Roy published a book about the Robert de la Mirandier family. And in it, he shows Etienne's ancestors, and they are from the French nobility. They first came to uh, New France in 1690. And he also uh, identifies Sesagonique as an Ottawa Indian. In one of three reports that MNO and Ontario used to create the historic Métis community of Killarney and environs, the author talks about Etienne arriving in Killarney and she says that his arrival marked the beginning of non-Aboriginal settlement in the area. And then finally, there's MNO's own verified Métis family line documents. These files that they have on their website uh, contain genealogical data about a family and the rationale that their registrar used to claim that individuals in that family are Métis. Well, interestingly enough, in the de la report, MNO's registrar does not identify Etienne as Métis. She doesn't identify Sesagonique as Métis either. And she also does not identify any of their 10 children as Métis. But MNO continually publicizes this quote-unquote fact about the first Métis ancestors in Killarney. So in this story, MNO says, by the 1830s, visitors to Killarney noted the existence of a lively Métis community where they danced away to the merry sound of the fiddle. A more detailed description of this 1836 visit to Shibonining is in a historical report on MNO's website. It's a 2001 report written by Gwyneth Jones for MNO, uh, the highlight is that the visitors described half-breeds dancing to a fiddle at the trader's house. For some people, um, that scene often equates to Métis culture. But there's more to the story than MNO talks about. The event was not described by multiple people as MNO claims, just one. I guess they think that having multiple people say there's a Métis community sounds more credible. But there was one visitor and he was writing, he wrote this description down in his diary. He arrived by steamer and he said their vessel was greeted at the dock by a large assembly of Indians and well-dressed Canadians. Two or three volleys were fired, and soon our lines were made fast. A few drams amply repaid the Indians, 
for the expenditure of their ammunition. So the visitors said there were Indians, half-breeds, and Canadians at the dock. He didn't identify a Métis community. Similarly, in their YouTube video, MNO talks about the party at Lamrangier's house like it has great significance. They say Etienne's home is noted as a Métis gathering place at this time. This is a, a good example of how MNO sometimes exaggerates what's in the record and often leaves out information so their story sounds better. Okay, story number three. In 1838, the Killarney Métis made a collective petition requesting a treaty comparable to the 1836 Bondhead Treaty. So here we go again, back to the 2001 historical report on MNO's website. And here's the story that it tells. In 1838, a Roman Catholic cleric reported to the Lieutenant Governor's secretary on his tour of the north shores of Lake Huron and amongst the islands scattered along that coast. The cleric said the half-breeds want to settle on Manitoulin Island, to fish in the waters off that island, and to have a Roman Catholic clergyman. They did not ask for a treaty, as MNO claims. They were not identified as the Killarney Métis, as MNO claims. There's no evidence to show that the half-breeds spoke to the cleric as a group or on behalf of a group. And the historical report's author says the location of the half-breeds is not known. Now, none of MNO's documented Métis ancestors lived in Killarney at that time, in Killarney Village. Only two of their documented Métis were living in this big Killarney and environs Métis community. Henry Corbier and Marie Roy. I'm not convinced that they were at on Manitoulin Island at that time, but let's just assume that they are. They later married and they had a large family and MNO has all their kids and grandchildren and great-grandchildren as documented Métis. If MNO is claiming that it was Henry and Marie who made that petition, then we are being asked to believe that in 1838, 15-year-old Henry and 12-year-old Marie, who were living on Manitoulin Island, petitioned the government to say they want to live on Manitoulin Island. We would also have to believe that in 1838, the Métis Collective that MNO calls the historic Métis community of Killarney and Environs consisted of two youngsters on Manitoulin Island. Another statement from MNO, the 1850 Robinson-Huron Treaty Negotiations between the Anishinaabe chiefs and the province of Canada also excluded the Killarney half-breeds. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. I can't imagine that they mean if you weren't at the negotiations, um, that turned you into a Métis person. So what I did with this was I just gave some examples of, uh, over the years, of different things to do with uh, being uh, treated by government as Indian people because the families in Shibonining that MNO lists as its documented Métis were actually treaty Indians under the Robinson-Huron Treaty. In 1855, for instance, the, the Indian Affairs Superintendent, who had just retired, went on to his, some travels 
and uh, Shaboning was one of the places he stopped at, and this is how he describes it. We coasted along the shore of the mainland and reached the Indian village of Chibonining, composed of wigwams and containing about 400 inhabitants. In 1877, 31 chiefs and principal men gathered here in Chibonining to sign one of the petitions sent to the Governor General for arrears of Robinson Treaty payments and interest. In 1883, Indian Affairs listed Chibonining as an Indian reserve. In 1905, births in Killarney were reported by the Indian agent and listed under the Division of Indian Reserves. For decades, Indian agents came to Killarney to pay treaty annuities, just like they visited other settlements of Robinson Treaty Indians to do the same. And this practice continued up until the late 1930s. Okay, so here is a recap of uh, the four events that I talked about. The last one I'll talk about in, in a few seconds. But first, I just want to bring your attention to the fact that um, each one of these historical events is, is all about Killarney Village. MNO doesn't provide any history at all about the Métis community of Killarney and environs. What about all the other families they said were part of Killarney and environs? They provide no history about how all these people, how these families interacted with each other. What activities did, were they involved in? What, how did they govern their big Métis community? at the same time as they're living in First Nations communities. So there's that aspect. The other thing is um, MNO identified the Killarney documented Métis as Métis in 1881, 1899, and 1901. That's well after these events that they list as their Métis history. So after all these events were over, then all of a sudden people turned Métis. So they don't make sense as Métis history. Even if you assume that each of their documented Métis was Métis from the time they have first arrived in Killarney, this is what you get. First of all, there's a total of only 14 people from 18 from the 1820s to the to 1900, there's only 14 people that they claim were Métis in Killarney Village. How many of them were Métis in, 18, in the 1820s? Nobody. 1830s? Nobody. 1840s? Nobody. Finally, in 1851, the year after the Robinson-Huron Treaty, Joseph Tranche Montagna is shown in Shabonining, that in that year he married Marie Solomon. The other Métis person that MNO talks about is Pierre Regis de la Mirandière. They don't know when he arrived. They know he arrived in Shabonining before 1858. So let's say they, he arrived in 1850, the same year as the Robinson Treaty. Well, you know what? That doesn't make sense either because during that year, he turned six years old. So he's the only documented Métis in Killarney at the time, and he's six years old. No wonder he was excluded from the negotiations. Now, the last thing that they have is in the 1870s. They say there were about 95 people in Killarney Village, 95 Métis people. But if you look at who were their documented Métis living in Killarney Village, there's only five people, five, not 95. Pierre Regis Lamoranger and Elizabeth Prue, Marguerite Recollet and one of the, her grandchildren in the Cooper family, and Dominic Solomon. That's it, five people. But MNO inflates it to 95 people. This is the historical evidence that they're providing to 
uh, support their claim of the Killarney and Environs Historic Métis Community. My brief to the Standing Committee on Indigenous and Northern Affairs has been posted on their website. So I've put a link to their page in the description box below this video. I'll also put a list of other briefs that you might want to read from people who've done historical research and who also are advising government not to pass Bill C-53. Bama P.